Hello everyone, Victor is here, your organic chemistry tutor, and in this video I want to talk about this fun question that one of my students brought to me. So the question is, we need to predict all possible products in this reaction and determine a major one if we are capable, of course. Well, let's look at this reaction and see what's going on. The first thing that I will always do for questions like that, I will analyze my reagent. And the first thing that jumps at me right away is this H2SO4. We know that H2 2SO4 is a strong acid, so it's going to protonate something. I'm also seeing methanol here, CH3OH, well that guy is going to be our polar protic solvent, so that is a poor nucleophile. On top of that, I'm seeing the OH in my actual molecule as well, that is a horrible living group, however, if we were to protonate it with our sulfuric acid, that might be a very different story. And one other thing that I'm seeing here is that this pH. Well, pH is not just some sort of a group that is sitting there for bells and whistles. pH is the aromatic ring, and it can be very important in terms of the uh, carbocation stability, possible uh, resonance uh, stabilization because of that, or any kind of rearrangements that it might cause. So, what I'm going to do, I will actually redraw the molecule in a more clear form, expanding all of my groups, namely BH here, and actually showing the complete structure. So I'm going to end up with a molecule that looks like this. And I got rid of the stereochemistry at my carbon over here, because that is not a chiral carbon, so dragging that dashes and wedges with me is quite irrelevant and unnecessary, so that just makes the picture more difficult to look at, so no, no one cares about that. Now, let's go through the mechanism of this reaction and see what kind of chemistry we can get here. I'm going to redraw my sulfuric acid here as HOSO3H, over here I don't need the entire structure, I just need the OH group from that, the acidic group here. And step number one, I'm going to protonate my OH of my molecule to make it into a little bit of a living group, a better living group here, so to speak. So that's going to give me a structure that looks like that, and I turn my CH2 that I have over here into just bond line structure so it doesn't clutter the picture too much. So now I have my living group, which means that the next step is going to be the living group dissociation, so I will do it like that, which gives me my carbocation. And this carbocation currently is a tertiary carbocation. So, from the stability perspective, this carbocation is pretty stable. However, right next to it, we have a secondary position, and if that was just a regular secondary position, we wouldn't really care about that. However, that's not just a regular secondary position. This is also a benzylic position, which means that if I have a carbocation over there, that carbocation is going to be stabilized by resonance, and benzylic carbocations, they are incredibly stable. In most cases, Cases, they are more stable than even tertiary carbocations, so in this case it is reasonable for us to expect the carbocation rearrangement. And to do that carbocation rearrangement, what I'm going to do here, I will take the hydrogen with all of its electrons and move that onto a carbon with my carbocation, doing the hydride shift. And as a result of my hydride shift, I'm going to end up with this benzylic carbocation, which is stabilized by resonance. I'm not going to show all the resonance structures here, but for the practice sake, make sure you know how to draw all of those resonance structures, you should be getting three additional resonance structures here. But from this point, the next thing that we are going to do, we can do either the elimination reaction giving us a double bond, or we can do a substitution reaction giving us an ether. So if I'm going to go with the elimination reaction, the only possible place for my elimination is going to be by pulling that proton off, <laughs> frankly it's the one that I just moved around, but I can pull that one off and create a double bond. So if I'm going to do that, I'm going to use another equivalent of my methanol, CH3OH, like this, and this CH3OH going to come in pull that proton off, creating a double bond between these two carbons. So the elimination product, the product of the E1 reaction in this case, going to look like this. We have an alkene, the double bond between my carbons over here, that alkene is not capable of any kind of easy or cis-trans uh, stereoisomerism, which means that we are not going to be having any kind of stereoisomers here, it's just this molecule and that's it. Now, from the perspective of the substitution reaction, the methanol can be attacking our carbon 
Harbo cation. I will clean up my picture a little bit and now I can have an attack like this one on my Carbo cation and in this case I'm going to end up with the protonated species because oxygen hasn't lost the hydrogen yet, that will look like this. And in order to get the final product in this substitution reaction, which is going to be an SN1 reaction of course, we are going to use another equivalent of our methanol, so CH3OH, or essentially whatever else uh, we have floating around with an electron pair, so this guy is going to come in pull that proton off, giving me the final product looking like this. And of course, this molecule is chiral, we do have a chiral carbon over here, which does mean that we are going to make a racemic mixture. Or in other words, it's going to be a 50-50 mixture of two enantiomers. So this way, if I were to draw all products in this reaction, I would first show my elimination product that looks like this. And I would show my substitution products, one will look like that, and the other one will look like this. And of course the relationship between our substitution products here is going to be enantiomers, and since I'm a little bit pressed for the space here, I'm not going to be showing that anywhere on my picture here. Now the question is, which out of these three molecules is going to be my major product, or major products if I have multiple? Well, the short answer here is it depends. It depends on how your instructor treats these molecules and it depends on how much information you learn about the substitution and elimination reactions uh, that happen next to the aromatic ring in your course. In reality, this reaction is going to give you the E1 product as the major product. This is highly acidic conditions and the conjugated system that we are going to get here between our alkene, which is over here, and our aromatic ring, like that, is going to be enormously stable. However, based on how we normally teach these reactions in a regular sophomore organic chemistry course, we would say that since this reaction happens at the room temperature and we do not indicate any high temperature, most instructors and most textbooks would indicate that that should be an SN1 reaction, again, based on what we teach you. So in questions like that, it's always a good idea to run it by your instructor because at the end of the day, they are the ones that are going to be giving you a grade. So consult with your instructor, with your textbook, but if you needed to draw all possible products, that's how you would approach a question like that. So hope you love organic chemistry so far, a science where you can have multiple answers and all of them are going to be correct. I don't know about you, but I just love it. If you learned something new today, give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel for daily organic chemistry updates, watch this video next, and I will see you tomorrow.